recipe, but there are better versions out there. And bleaching means the meat could be fairly pink. It's fairly pale. It's exactly what the recipe said. That really is the problem. Saws around. Then I will cut them in half and then I will caramelize them. Some morels on the top on the mash as well. Pig's trotters. There's obviously quite a few recipes out there. There's one guy who got absolutely famous for it, Pierre Kaufman. I used to work for him for a few weeks. It's a fairly good recipe, but there are better versions out there. And I want to go through that. And I will even improve those versions for you. I find with this recipe, it might be that the sauce is a bit sweet. It asks you for carrots, it asks you for onion, veal stock, and port wine. There's no acidity to balance that sort of out, okay? So, but the stuffing and all of that, that's good. And I will also show you an improvement on the mashed potatoes. Another chef I used to work for for a few weeks is Raymond Blanc. What he does, same filling, same method, but the sauce is much better. The last guy, which I used to be an executive head chef for several years, is Marco Pierre White. So his mashed potatoes are brilliant, but his sauce is what stands out. And on top of all of that, I will show you the trick that none of those book mentions to really get your pig trotters super super perfect super glazed super shiny so off we go so the first thing i want to show you is obviously how to deep hone a pig's trotter so what none of the chefs tell you is that you need to bleach those trotters i mean michael b White talks about bleaching means the meat could be fairly pink so i basically need to put that trotter into some cold water overnight in the fridge to bleach it so i wash out any sort of of those protein juices you need to try to get some trotter from the front, basically the front leg. See, that's a big back leg. And they're okay too if that's all you can get, yeah? But you can see that's where usually the butcher cuts up the tenons, put the hooks in, and then hangs the pig up like so. But you will find that the front legs are usually a little bit longer and a little bit more slender, yeah? It's quite an elegant pig's foot. It must be a female. <laughs> how they get rid of all this hair. So it's a bit like hairy armpits. So if you look underneath there, there's a bit of a sort of a hairy bit. So you can just scrape that out. Between the toes here, if you can't access that because it's a bit sort of tight, you can always do that later on much easier too. If there would be any sort of hairs that stand out, you just go there and burn them off now because you don't want to have those things on they will not disappear when you when you cook your trotter the so next thing deep boning that thing so all i need to do is i need to go underneath so in that case it's open up already it's just cut it so what we want to do is here with those two toes we're going to the first knuckle that part second knuckle that's where i need to be and then you just undress that bone that's all you do the only focus you're going to have to have on that sort of thing is not to cut the skin okay so take your time it helps you a little bit if you just take a tea towel like so because you get a bit of grip on the skin so just keep going little by little there's a meaty bit in there as well which i'm not going to worry too much about if it sticks to the skin you will have to take it out later on if it's not on the skin just leave it come up here to the first knuckle so you can literally feel where the first knuckle is so that's a good indicator second knuckle is there that's great then just keep pulling that a bit pulling that a bit get your knife in then i'll get to the first knuckle here and we cut straight through that second knuckle is here we cut straight through that so there's not much force you need there is a way through really work from the inside you need to try to cut as many tendons as you can so next thing i do is Get your tea towels. And you flip that out of its socket. And here we go. There's your pig strutter. Absolutely perfect. So what you can do now, you can go much easier between those two toes and just scrape out this hair or burn it off. And then you go on the inside and then you cut out any tendons that you can see. Get rid of them as well so that you just have a nice plain skin. 
So the next thing is wheat bread. So we need to soak this sweet bread in water overnight. Again, you bleach it and it's much easier to peel it. So you can see like how I pull the skin off here now. And then I need to break it down into little nuggets. And that's it. And that's our sweet bread. And then we can start cooking our trotters. Chop and dice the carrots, the celery and the onions. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for the sauce some thyme and a bit of bay leaf and some wine some real stock i'll put the recipe in the link below hot on butter into pan vegetables go in cook them golden brown add the wine to it you add the stock you add the trotters you make sure they're nicely covered. You bring it to the boil, you cover it with a lid, you heat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You put your pot into the oven and you cook it for approximately three to three and a half hours. The only thing you're gonna have to be really careful with, the trotters can stick on the bottom of the pot, so you're gonna have to shake it sort of every hour so that the skins don't attach themselves as the liquid reduces, okay? And then I'll show you how to make the filling. <laughs> The next thing we're going to do is cook off those sweetbreads. So just heat a pan. So the sweetbreads are obviously a little bit wet. Dry them off a little bit. Get some kitchen paper, get a tea towel. Just dry it all off. A bit of butter in the pan. So don't stir them straight away because they might stick a little bit. You just want to get a bit of color on it, develop a lot of flavor. So it's a really good dish for pre-cooking because I could make those whole big trotters with the stuffing and you could even freeze it down. And then later on, you just literally take it out, put it in a steamer, put it in some boiling hot water, as I will show you. Then you heat off the sweet bread. It goes into the bowl, into the fridge, chill it down. Great, that's done. Next thing, we're gonna cook our morels. So if you have dried morels, just put them in a pot, add some water and bring them to the boil. And then after cooking, we will sort them so that we take the bigger ones, the uglier ones, we cut them up, we put them in the stuffing and the really nice and pretty ones, we will keep them for our garnish on the trotters. Let them cook for two to three minutes and the liquid are gonna go into our sauce. Right, so let's cook, let's set that aside. Okay, the next thing is the chicken mousse. Make sure that your chicken meat is cold, that your blender bowl is cold, that your cream is cold, and that your egg is cold, because the one thing that can really go wrong is that if all the ingredients are too warm, and blend it all together, it will literally all break up. So I'm gonna show you a little tip with the chicken because in an ideal world, you would put that through a strainer afterwards. So you can get around that if you just use chicken breast and then you make sure that you cut out all the tendons or sort of silver skins if you see any. It's pretty easy with chicken. You just sort of scrape that all off as you see me doing here. And through that, you save yourself the putting it through a sieve. Since it is a stuffing, that you're gonna put into big strotter with the sweet bread and all of that. If you have a few of those tendons in there, I tell you what, nobody would notice that. Yeah. Chicken's cold, the blender is cold. Put the chicken meat in, put the egg in. And okay, wipe it down from the sides, salt and pepper. So the next thing is the cream that goes in as well. And when you add the cream, you don't want to whip it too much anymore because it's the cream that is most likely the one can break or turn into butter. Blend that together again. And there's our chicken mousse into a bowl. There we go. I'm cooking my trotters at the moment. My chicken mousse, sweetbreads, that's all chilling. So you can start making my sauce. So what the recipe asks for is that you have some sliced shallots, some garlic, a mushroom, a bit of thyme, bay leaf, some Madeira. So if you don't have Madeira, some sake, that sort of a bread has a slight sherry flavor, which go really nice with it as well. It also asks you for a bit of cognac, some sherry vinegar. And that is obviously a much more exciting sauce than the Pierre Kaufmann recipe. I think that's why Raymond Plon picked up on 
and Marco Pierre White picked up on and improved that source. But we, today we're going to go one step further and I'll show you another trick to can make it even better than those two recipes. And butter. In goes the chicken legs. Oh, that's, that smells quite nice, you know. Sweet bread trimmings go in as well. Okay, turn it over. Get a really nice color on both sides. In case you could use the chicken legs for a meal, but in those days it was probably a staff meal. Otherwise, just give you some chicken bones and some chicken wings and some chicken trimmings, you know? Cheers. Sherry vinegar, so that goes in. And then cook out the acidity, deglaze the pan, build up more color, build up more flavor. I mean, <laughs> the vinegar, it's the acid, isn't it? Then you add the cognac, you do the same thing. Oh, that's so much nicer. <laughs> add the Madeira, and we do the same thing, we just keep Adding, caramelizing, adding, caramelizing. See what an amazing color we got there already. Add the veal stock to it. Liquid from the sweetbreads. It's from the morels. Squeeze it out like so. So the unusual thing you obviously ask for is to finish off the sauce with a bit of cream. Obviously it's not gonna keep your sauce super clear, but it's also something that will round up the sauce really, really nicely. Okay, let's start with the morels. The nicer, smaller ones to keep for the garnish later on. And the bigger one, we'll be just putting them through the filling. So I'm gonna just dice them up a bit. Morels go in, sweet bread goes in. We add the chicken mousse, just enough to bind that all together. Mix it together. Okay, next thing, peel your potatoes. I do have a video just on mashed potatoes, which explains everything I'm gonna do here today. It will be too much to go through all of that again. But basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some Paris mash, very much in the spirit of Shoah Robuchon. And yeah, we'll place it in the link below. The other garnish will be some shallots or pearl onions. The main thing is when you do the shallots, but you leave the root in because that's gonna hold your shallots nicely together. And all I'm gonna do is I will cook them later on a little bit in our sauce and then I will cut them in half and then I will caramelize them. Okay, so that's our sauce. So the recipe says that I should strain it off after half an hour. The chicken legs obviously look really nicely, so you could use them as a dish by itself. Now it asks to put the sauce through a muslin cloth several times. You would remove all the impurities of the sauce and then we cook it further down to a real nice syrup. That's the first part of my sauce. I can put the morels in now. I will also add my shallots and cook them through. Okay, so the sauce is reduced nicely. Take the shallots out. We cook it for approximately 15 minutes. And get on with our mashed potatoes. And the potatoes, when you steam them, it's obviously has several advantages. Number one is I can cut them much smaller. They will cook quicker. Obviously, I don't expose them to water, so the potatoes can't soak up the water. They cannot lose their flavor. Check out my video on that, yeah? And the good thing about that is I obviously can overcook the potatoes, so it makes the mashing much easier. Cut that, you just can take your shallots now. You can cut them lengthwise. So to wrap the trotters, get some tin foil. Then you need to brush the tin foil with butter in the lower part, so the lower half, so that you can put the trot on it because you do not want to put the trot in there and then it ends up sticking to the foil. Okay, so let's take that trotters out of the liquid. You're gonna have to put it, and again, no recipe says that, put it on a rack just to let the liquor drain off a bit, yeah? I think that's where number one failure is in those trotters. Look at them now. There's obviously not that much color on the skin. The skin, in my opinion, is fairly pale. Did exactly what the recipe said. That really is the problem. It will just end up as good old boring boiled book skin. I'm gonna show you a trick to make that a little bit better. I'm gonna take that out, clean it up, make sure there's no vegetable thyme leaves and stuff like that sticking on it. So you see it always breaks up a little bit and you see that as well in Kofmer's recipe and 
Remember, Blow's recipe as well is in Marco Beer White's recipes. It's always gonna break up around the knuckles. It's just something you cannot avoid. So there's all that cooking liquid. So you're gonna have to fill them while they're fairly hot because you cannot fill them when they're cold. There's no way because the skin is full of gelatin. It's just gonna get really, really hard. But you're gonna have to be super careful with the skin because it can break quite easily. Okay, so just get some nice nuggets of that sweet bread and gently push them with the center there. Get some more, really fill that up. You don't have to worry too much about the bottom. We can just hide that later on. So that's it, roll them in the foil. Push the ends in, gently twist them. So the recipe says now that you should, should put that into water and poach it for approximately 12 minutes. So that's a bit vague. That's never going to cook through in 12 minutes. Forget about that. The problem you would have if I put that in water, as the water would go in anywhere, so the whole thing would be just a mess. What I will do, I will poach it. But before I do that, I will wrap it in some glad wrap, which I'm not a big fan of. And I put some rubber bands around the ends and through that, I basically make it waterproof. Next thing we will do, we will cook them. And for that, we're just gonna get some boiling hot water, drop them in, heat them up for another three or four minutes, and then just turn the heat off. Okay, so to make the mashed potato strainer, potatoes go in, put them through a fairly fine sieve. To do that three times, the first time you can do it without the butter. Okay, then you add both butter, a touch of cream, uh, salt, stir that together, put it through a strainer a second time, third time, and then you have those amazing Paris mash. Okay, so finish that sauce and Pierre Kaufman's recipe, basically just cook that down. Okay, it's all right. It's a bit boring, but that one tastes so much better. I'm gonna put those two together, strain that through. So, and that's where a bit my trick comes in. So I'm gonna cook that sauce down to glaze. So I'm gonna make two sauces. I'm gonna make one sauce that's a bit thicker. I'm gonna make one sauce that's a bit thinner. And the slightly thinner one, I'm gonna pour around the dish. And the sticky, glazy one, we're gonna use and glaze that big trotted, a bit like the chocolate cake. And that gives you a different dimension because when you don't eat it, it has that certain stickiness. I don't wanna have boiled pork skin. I wanna have it a bit gelatinous and sticky. That's what we're gonna do today. Okay, sauce is now thick enough, so let's fish at all the morel. Then obviously the gravy we need for the dish itself. The other half, we just cook it down. A really thick glaze. See, that's just gonna coat that trotter really, really nicely. Let's set that aside and then finish off our sauce. We still miss the bit of butter. I just stir that in gently. It will do a miracle in terms of flavor because, you know, cream brings all the flavors together and covers any sort of mistakes in the sauce up. Let's take those trotters out. Here they are, perfectly cooked. Okay, cut open the glad wrap. So you can see there's quite a bit of water coming out now. And here we go, there's a big strotter. Although we followed exactly everything that the recipe said. It's very pale. And that's all you're ever gonna get because you just boiled it in some brown stock. So my oven is heated up to 230 degrees. In foil. Trotters go on into the super hot oven for around five to six minutes. A little bit of butter, shallots go in. Okay, trotter goes on. What do we do with the glaze? Put it on. Some morels on the top. Sauce around. Caramelized shallots, mashed potatoes. And like Marco does, he throws a few morels on the mash as well. Oh, so good. So thanks so much for watching. Check out my video on mashed potatoes. I look forward to seeing you next time. How did you? Lots of good fat, lots of good collagen.